The most common question I am asked and see posted online regarding helium hotspots is usually related to the antennas. Everyone is asking if they need one, if it will help them earn more HNT, or if there won't be much of an improvement in earnings power at all after getting an antenna. It looks like all of this depends on three major factors, DBI or gain of your antenna, your elevation, and the terrain around you. In this video, I'll try to explain as best I can the effects of DBI on signal strength and shape, as well as where certain DBI antennas may be appropriate and where they might not be. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. A uh, quick hotspot update. We're on the road to 27,000 hotspots now. Uh, I forget where we were at the end of last video, um, but I think it was in the low 26,000 range, but growing steadily. Uh, regarding the giveaway, that is still in the works, so stay tuned for more details in the next week. Uh, hopefully that uh, is uh, officially announced on the next few videos, so stay tuned. And one uh, hilarious and equally embarrassing thing that I have to mention, because I've seen way too many comments about it, is that I actually spelt crypto wrong in, in my logo in the first I think it was three or four videos before uh, before somebody mentioned it and then I corrected it. So feel free to go back and laugh at my expense because I'm not changing it. Uh, I'll just be correcting it, obviously, going forward. Uh, I still can't believe that happened, but you can go take a look. I think it says Crypto instead of Crypto. Anyway, uh, one more thing in, uh, in Helium world that I want to touch on that I've that I've been made aware of is this uh, the Nebra uh, well the the helium miners that are available on eBay uh, I don't really know what my opinion on this is yet because I'm just looking at it now but I mean it's pretty it's pretty crazy I mean this one is pre-owned for thirty thousand dollars but you there is there is free four-day shipping so that might be that might be worth it uh, it's just really, really funny. I was thinking about doing something where if this video gets X amount of likes or something, I'll actually buy one of these, but I don't think we're there just yet. Okay, so let's talk about antenna gain or antenna DBI, because um, I was very curious about this when I, uh, when I purchased my miner as well. And to be quite honest, I think even in my earlier videos, I didn't even, uh, I, I think I actually mentioned that um, I thought that DBI just meant it just has a stronger signal, but that's really not the case. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, I think there are three major factors. Uh, the DBI or gain of your antenna is one, the elevation of your antenna is two, and the surrounding topography is the third. I don't really think those should be in any specific order, but those are the three things. Uh, to better understand how this works, I think the best way to think about antenna DBI and gain is to think about how uh, a flashlight works. If you've ever used a flashlight that you can adjust the light beam on, that is similar That is similar to how DBI affects your antenna signal. An increase in DBI does not increase the, air quotes, strength of your antenna signal. It just directs that signal in a different direction, so it will travel a little farther wherever it is concentrated. Similar to concentrating the beam on a flashlight. You are not actually adding energy or strength to the flashlight when you do that. You are just concentrating the light in a certain direction. This analogy was what I used to help me understand and sort of visualize what is going on here. And also, I'm going to show you two diagrams here that are also incredibly helpful in understanding what the DBI does to your signal um, and how it, uh, and you can use that to compare it to your situation and see how that will be affected. So as you can see, the higher the DBI, it means it's more of a concentrated signal. So it is shooting the signal in one direction rather than a very low DBI where it is more 360 degrees. Obviously from two to nine, it gets gradually uh, more concentrated into a smaller cone uh, shape is where the signal is going. So. There's another diagram here 
Uh, I like this title to gain or not to gain. But there's another diagram here which puts it in, uh, which puts it a little bit in perspective as to where you might be located. So you can see, well, this is using, this isn't talking about helium in this article, it's talking just about uh, signal in general, radio signal in general, but you can see that there's a car, I guess a car here, um, and you can see the nine dBi signal. The nine dBi signal is extremely concentrated and is not gonna be very effective in providing coverage for this car. Whereas the lower DBI is much more circular and is actually covering a lot of this hillside or mountainside. The, as I mentioned, the nine DBI is just going straight into the earth and it's not going to do anything. It's not gonna, the nine DBI is completely going over this car. It's not hitting this car. But it, so in this situation, if you're in that location, a low DBI signal is ideal. Uh, contrarily, this is a flat, diagram where this car is using uh, the ideal DBI for this car to, to communicate to these other cars where they're located is the nine DBI because it is concentrating that signal in one direction. So it is going a little bit farther to reach them. Whereas if they had the lower DBI antenna, it is just a giant circle and there's those cars are out of range uh, because it the, the signal is is not concentrated in one direction. So I sort of, I tried to, I, I hope that this, I hope this puts into perspective what's going on because this really helped me understand what, what is happening. I always, I really did just think that a higher DBI meant it was just a stronger signal and it's going to go farther all over the place. But obviously that's not the case. And I also, I know we went over this in a different video, but I'll link this page below again so that you can use this tool to uh, to see what the topography around you is like. Obviously, in this case, we've always been using San Francisco, but here, um, this guy is, uh, there's obviously a giant hill or, or, or something in between these two people. So if this guy had a, um, even if this guy did have a high DBI antenna, he's not going to hit that person. So he's probably better off getting larger coverage with a lower DBI antenna. Um, but obviously you have, you would have to go around 360 degrees and really check out what it's like. Um, and it obviously is going to be dependent on his elevation as well, where if this guy was on top of a building, if the antenna was on top of a building somewhere, it might be a little bit of a different story depending on, uh, depending on where he is. But again, I'll link this below so you guys can use it for your location. You could literally go to wherever you are on the map and use this. Um, and here I just summed up a few things. So the main takeaways here that I hope you guys are, are noticing is that a lower gain in a hilly terrain or a DBI, I should say, lower gain or DBI in hilly terrain will give your hotspot better coverage. Higher gain or DBI in flat terrain will give your hotspot better coverage. And that's for the reason that I mentioned earlier. Um, you, could, you could sort of visualize it using these two charts here. Um, and then now just some things to take into consideration uh, is, of course, as I mentioned, the elevation and topography. Um, if your antenna is at the top, of, you have to realize, like, think about someone who is at the top of a large apartment building where, which is common because a lot of these, you know, a lot of these hotspots are in major cities. So if your antenna, if your apartment is at the top of one of these big apartment buildings and you have a super high DBI antenna, you might be going straight over all of the hotspots around you because it is so concentrated vertically. Uh, I'm sorry, not vertically, horizontally. It's not going 360 degrees. And additionally, if you're in a valley or, or something like that and you're using a high DBI antenna, you might be shooting the signal strength directly into the earth like we went over in that first uh, diagram. Um, so a lower DBI antenna might be best. Obviously, these are just two examples of where a lower DBI antenna might be best, but the opposite is true for a higher DBI antenna. Um, so you just have to really look at your situation, your uh, topography, your elevation, and try and decide which is better. Um, I'm, when I get my minor, I'm gonna try and do a like 30-day test um, or, and I'm going to try and show you guys like the topography around me and do a 30 day test of how I'm earning with two different antennas. Um, and that might be a cool exercise to do at my expense, obviously, because one of those will probably earn less HNT than the other, but I think it'll be very, uh, informative and educational. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope this was helpful. I'll have a bunch of links in the description about the things I went to and a bunch of other uh, links where antennas, like uh, I know Rack sells antennas that are compatible with their miner. So I'll have, I'll have uh, links to all that stuff below. But thank you guys for being here. Until next time, see you later.